He's a bit like, I'm gonna have to introduce myself. Yes, I so, love it. You're very good at it, guys, so I'm just gonna listen. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon of Savage Reads and today I'm back with the Reading Horizons with a very special guest, Tracy Chevalier. Hi. This is one of those moments where I'm just like, what is life? <laughs> <laughs> Simon, how you have did, a fun job. How did that happen? <laughs> so, the email was exchanged, it's funny how easy it is. <laughs> it, is it might even have been a text. Yeah, yes. I think it was, or a WhatsApp. A very WhatsApp modern, or something, we are very right. modern. We're, we're up. So what we're going to do is talk about what we have read, what we are reading, and what we're going to read next. And for those of you who don't know this, which I'm sure you do, because I've been wanging on, that's the technical term, um, <laughs> about her books recently. <laughs> so um, Girl with Pearl Earring, I read it, oh, I just loved it so much. Okay. I might have to say, it's a very sexy book. It is quite sexy, and they only touch twice. I know, it's, it's not like a major touch, it's just sort of, you know, Ooh. like that. Yeah, restraint can be very sexy. Yeah. It can a be little tip book. out there for you. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you won't have seen me wanging on about it yet, but I will be wanging on about a single thread, which is phenomenal, which is Tracy's latest novel. And also, Fallen Angels, I've always loved because I read it when I was a tour guide at Highgate Cemetery. And I was a tour guide at Highgate Cemetery, so we have this bizarre background in common. Yeah. But I'm not sure if we overlapped. I don't think we did. I think I stopped around 2003. When you heard I was arriving. Yeah, the yeah. Restraining it's like order. I made tracks, man. <laughs> Right, so what have you just read? I have just finished um, The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. Um, and this is his new novel. Um, he wrote very famously The Underground Railroad, uh, a novel that's like steampunk. It's sort of Victorian about the Underground Railroad, um, but it also makes it magical realistic mm. because they have an actual railroad, which we all know wasn't. It was a group of people who were helping runaway slaves get to freedom. And, I had written about the Underground Railroad too in a book called The Last Runaway, so I was particularly interested to read that take on it, and I thought that was great. So I was really looking forward to this because um, the reviews were great. And okay, I was a little disappointed, which which is amazing. I'm I'm amazed at myself. Yeah. But okay, it's a very thin book. It's like 188 pages or something. And originally, usually, I love short books. Short is good. I don't want big fat ones, but I thought that this just didn't give me enough. It didn't, it was, it's about these, a uh, um, uh, uh, school down in Florida where uh, boys who, adolescents who have been in trouble get sent to, uh, white boys and black boys, but they're segregated. And it's about the treatment of the African-American boys there in the 60s. And it's just horrendous. It's horrendous. But I felt like it was too sparse, like he wrote it too fast. It just needed a little bit more filling out of some of the characters. Some of the characters just flew by. And there are some unbelievable moments. And there's some real beautiful moments, beautifully told. But I, it just didn't quite give me enough. And I know that you love it. But also it. it's weird because I had that with the Underground Railroad, yeah. where I didn't quite get quite as yeah. much as I wanted so this one for me was better okay that said in when I, you know when you have distance from a book and you think about it a little bit it did read very much more like journalism rather than a story and the fact that there isn't that depth sometimes and sometimes you are a little bit emotionally distant but then other times you're so close it's almost too much yeah and he does say at the end in the acknowledgements you know this really happened and they, they uncovered all these graves these unmarked graves uh, not that long ago mm -hmm. and, and this actually has happened and there's an archaeological dig there now. The university is trying to find out what actually happened to these young boys, and um, and so it does have that that journalistic quality. But I think it just needed a bit more to it. Mm. No, that, I still really wrote it, and I think yeah. I, I don't know. There's something about it that got to me way more than the Underground Railroad, and I don't know why. Because mm. I was, I remember reading the Underground Railroad, and I was like, mm, I'm a bit disappointed in this. I liked it, but I didn't love it. But um, no. That's interesting. Yeah. So interesting. Are you going to tell us what you've yeah, been so reading? Yeah, so I have just read The Handmaid's Tale. What? I don't know if you've, you've heard just of read it. The Handmaid's Tale? <laughs> well, it's technically a reread. Yes. <laughs> so okay. I've read the novel, and this is the graphic novel, but I wanted to read it before. There's some book that's come out called The Testaments that people, I think a couple of people have mentioned. Um, but um, yeah, so I wanted to read it first. And this is, it's so well done because the way the colours are done, like the reds and the blues, and it's just. And it really, really gets you, and the way that the illustrations have 
sort of multiple images within them sometimes is mm. so well done so you get the layers of the novel um because i'm not always 100 percent on graphic novel adaptations i cannot get on with graphic novels really? at all i know i know i've tried sabrina oh and i was a real downer oh, oh. <laughs> and uh <laughs> alison bechdel i i can't remember the name of it but it's family like, home yeah yeah and i everybody raves about I it i love that just, one i didn't like a second it's just there's just something about um pictures i don't know i i, I grew up looking reading comic books and i and it's just a it's a different thing from the immersion of uh yeah. Of the novel. But, but I would recommend it. If you yeah. haven't read A Home Myself, I would still say go to the book because the book just gives mm. so much. Um, and I do think it is a book that everybody should really, really read. But if you have read it and you're either going to read the Testaments or you're in a long queue, our library queue is huge for the Testaments at the moment, then head to this in the interim, is my advice. Or to, as kind of like a re remembering. Funnily enough, speaking of Margaret Atwood, what, what am I reading, reading Tracy? Right now? I'm just putting it just into the, woo, here we go, the Testaments. I know, okay, I'm going to put it down now because it's had so much publicity, nobody needs to see it more, but it is a beautiful, and actually, here's the front, and then the back is of a girl, a young girl. But also, there's the woman in her hair. There. Yes, and then on yes. the front there's a woman in her. Yep, it's so yep. clever. And the end papers have that too, so you can see as a woman and a girl together. It's quite amazing. Okay, so this came out this morning, um, and this we record this. I should say this will go live two days after it's out. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, so uh, this is that day, and I bought it this morning, and I had a long train ride to come up to Liverpool, and um, so I thought I'm just going to read the testaments and. I was a little nervous about it because I'm really nervous about I it. um I was expecting I love the Handmaid's Tale I also love the TV series although I think it's just gone a little haywire but it's it's still quite amazing and gripping and I gave um, up because it was too dark oh well, it is really dark but it's also great um so I have a good I have good things to say I'm very Testaments excited. is fabulous so far I'm I'm probably a third of the way in. And you know what happens when you have that moment with a book where suddenly you're hooked and so you buy your lunch sandwich and you realize you can't actually put the sandwich down because you want to keep reading? Mm -hmm. That's what happened to me today. Oh, wow. And, uh, and it, it just like sort of takes a little while. And the thing about it is I don't want to give any spoilers, but there are three narrators and it takes a while to work out how and if they are in any way related to what went on before in The Handmaid's Tale, both in the book and also some references to some of the TV stuff. Oh, wow. But you don't have to know any of that to get it, I promise you. And and when you start working out who, it's so smart, it's so well-written, it's so entertaining, it's so easy to read, I just think people are going to gobble this up. And I, what's I will be really next smart, too, is that the Handmaid's Tale really focused on the Handmaids, and this broadens it out so that you get some people from the Gil who were running Gilead, uh, you get that perspective too, and just very different perspectives. I think she's a genius. So Margaret Atwood is 79 years old, and she is kicking it. She's doing amazing. She is knocking it out of the park. I gotta hand it to her, so it's um, you have something to look forward to. I think if I met her, I'd cry. I think it would probably happen. Yeah. Um, so what are you I'm very keen to read that. So I'm reading at the moment short stories, and this is A Constant Hum by Alice Bishop. Mm -hmm. And this is out in Australia. It hasn't reached anywhere else yet, but it's up for the Readings Prize, which is a prize for first or second novel um, written, in fact, no, first or second work uh, by an Australian author by an independent bookshop chain in Australia, which I think is amazing, okay. because Australia, as those of you who know, have been watching my channel a while, is the most like me place ever that I've never been. Oh, it's got to happen. <laughs> yeah, it we have to make it happen. <laughs> we did it's a great place. But this is amazing. So this is based around a fictional uh, fictional accounts of the Black Saturday fires, which were the biggest fires in Australia caused by one man. Um, and it's about who, well, all the people who died and all the people that survived and what's happened later on. And I've only about a third of the way through so far. But what's amazing is some of the stories are like six pages, some will be two sentences, some are, and she's just mm -hmm. creating this incredible, and, and some of them you don't even think are related to the fires at all, and then suddenly there's a reason why, but the writing is absolutely stunning. So this is her debut, well, not debut novel, but her debut work, um, and I highly, highly recommend it, although it's really hard to go over here. What is going on with Australian fiction in the UK? Yes. I could talk about that for hours, but I won't. 
Okay. What are you going to read next, Tracy? Uh, I am about to go to the States on a short book tour. And I'm going to have a lot of flights because big country and they're long flights. Um, and I'm a little nervous flyer. So what I wanted, yeah, mm, turbulence, I'm not good. I'm one of those people who clutches people who I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Hi. And make little shrieks. At, uh, so I need something that's going to really, I'm going to be so drawn into. And because the Testaments I'm already reading, and it's a huge book, I didn't want to carry it around. I thought quite a big I need something in paperback. So it is uh, Tana French's The Witch Elm. I've been now out in paperback. I've only read one of her books too, which is called The Secret Place. And I really liked it, although it was a little bit long, I thought. But this has had fantastic reviews, and I wanted something I could just get totally absorbed in. Um, uh, it's about a family, an Irish family, and there's a murder. There's an old body is, is dug up, and apparently it's just beautifully written. What I thought The Secret Place was beautifully written. It, was, it just needed a little bit of cutting down. But this, I just feel like I can bury myself in this, and I won't even notice the turbulence. So that's my... That's my goal. I love a good thriller on a plane. Yeah. I've, I've yeah. not noticed turbulence because of a thriller before. And this is sort of a thriller, but it's it's also really um, beautifully written and beautifully written. I've heard it takes a little while to get going, but then okay. you're totally drawn in. I'll read and the I'll... taking a while to get going in the waiting area of the airport. Yeah. And then when I board the plane, I'll be You'll be totally well. gripped. But my problem with the one that I read of hers was that yeah. the ending was too open-ended. Ah, and it was a crime, yeah. and I was like, how can you yeah, do that? Susan Hill did that with the book one, so I was like, I threw it across the room, I was so cross. The book that I'm going to read next is oh. Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I absolutely okay. loved her book, Mr. Love and Man. Have you read that? No, not it's yet. It's okay. joy in a book. It's just joy. Um, and this is about 12 different black women through the last, I think, several decades in the UK. Um, and I didn't realise it's told almost in verse which I wasn't wow. expecting. Um, but she's done that before, because my mum is a huge fan. My mum's also a really big fan of Tracy. And it's quite furious that she's not here. Um, Sorry, oh. Louise. <laughs> Sorry, you, you did sort of bow to her at one point. So I, think I that did was, bow to her, yes. I met her and I bowed to her. It was amazing. It, was amazing. It, was amazing. Yes. it made my mum's year. That was the highlight of her year so far. Um, so yeah, I really, really want to get to this. Bernadine is an author who I've been meaning to read a lot more of. I've had this annoying me and very naughtily since spring. Right. And I haven't got to it. It happens. We all have books that we haven't read that are sitting on our bedside tables or all over the house, and uh, we need to read yeah. them. So and it's also read. the one that I would like to win the book, even though I've not read it yet. Apologies, Margaret Atwood. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, no, because I feel like this book is going to be so big, yeah. and sometimes yeah, it, doesn't need it, it shouldn't be yeah. about that, though. It should be about the best book. And I'm going to read some of the shortlist. Are you going to read any of the shortlist? Mm, yeah, yeah, I'm going to definitely read, read Bernard Jean. I really want to read the Lucy Elman, the thousand page one that's like a housewife in Ohio. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's like the modern day Ulysses. I, I think, uh, but every time I pick it up in the bookstore, I just look at it and go, oh, and it, it's, you know, it's small type and it's, there's no paragraphs and there's no punctuation. But I think that once, if you get into it, it probably is. Mm. Makes sense. Well, that's what we've been reading. And I'm just yeah. going to dart very swiftly. Hang on. Yes. Because I just wanted to show you Tracy's books. And I'll link these down below because these are the three that I've read and loved. So you have Girl with Pearl Earring. That picture is so infamous. I'm going to go there. Yeah, one, two. You just go. You go ahead. Falling <laughs> Angels. Okay. And then also a single... A single oh! Yeah. That's the actual cover. <laughs> there we go. Simon has a... Special oh, that's one. A, that's this a proof is the one that the one. you yeah. can all get. Yeah. And I'll link all those down below too. Tracy, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for watching and I'll Bye. see you all soon. Bye. Bye.